Hello, current and future drivers of the world. It's Liz here again with Drivers at Direct, and I'm here today to break down lane positioning and spatial awareness in residential neighborhoods. Navigating residential roads can be difficult for new drivers because most of these roads are two-way streets that don't have road markings or lane lines dividing that road into two. So it's important for you to identify your driving lane on the right side of the road and try to stay centered in it as much as possible as this will be the safest place for you to be, especially when there's other traffic present. When driving in a residential neighborhood without lane lines, just imagine a yellow line running down the center of the road, dividing that road into two lanes. Your job is to stay on the right side of this imaginary line. In many residential neighborhoods, you'll often see sewer manholes near the center of the road. These oftentimes can help you visually divide the road into two. Another thing you can do is just imagine another oncoming car driving towards you. Just think, would we both have enough space to fit in the road? If not, you probably need to move over to the right a little more. Once you have the road divided in half, the next challenge is maintaining a consistent lane position within your side of the road. So to do this, you want to aim high and select a visual target in the center of your lane that's a good distance down the road. We recommend constantly scanning the road about 10 to 15 seconds ahead or about a block or two down the road. By looking further down the road and taking in the big picture, your car should more or less stay centered in your lane automatically. Though you may need to make small corrections, even on a straight road, these adjustments usually are pretty subtle and require very small movements of the steering wheel. If you're having trouble maintaining a straight line, make sure you're not squeezing the wheel too tight or even holding it too loosely. You want to maintain a firm yet gentle grip on the wheel without oversteering. Driving is not like a video game where you're constantly moving the wheel back and forth. Instead, think of it as you're babysitting the steering wheel. You know, you're just keeping it secure and making gentle corrections when needed. Not only is the big picture driving technique key to maintaining your lane position, it also allows you to identify potential hazards earlier. If you aim low and try to guide your car by just staring a few feet in front of you, you'll most likely veer towards your left into oncoming traffic and you won't have enough time to identify potential hazards until it's too late. Anytime you fixate on a single object, you tend to gravitate towards it. Now that you've mastered keeping a consistent lane position on the right side of the road, you need to learn how to handle parked cars. When you approach a parked car that's on the right side of the road, imagine that the lane you're in is moving over to the left and you must move over to the left as well, giving that parked car ample space. Always assume that someone could open the car door at any moment. So for this reason, you want to give at least three to four feet of distance from a parked car. If no oncoming traffic is coming, it's okay to move slightly into the center of the road to give that parked car enough space. A common mistake new drivers make with parked cars is staring at them because they're so nervous about hitting them. But remember, anytime you stare at a single object, you tend to gravitate towards it. So the best way for you to not hit a parked car is to know your lane position and guide your car by looking further down the center of the road. Remember, aim high. Sometimes you'll be faced with both oncoming traffic and parked cars, making your lane of travel more narrow and potentially dangerous. In these situations, slowing down will help you immensely by giving you more control over your positioning and more time to react to potential hazards, like a car door suddenly swinging open. You ideally want to position yourself evenly between oncoming traffic and parked cars, erring on being a little closer to the parked cars, which are less dangerous than oncoming traffic. If the road is so narrow that you're not sure you can safely fit in between the parked car and oncoming traffic, then just yield the right away to the oncoming vehicle and let them pass before proceeding. So far, we've talked about spatial awareness with our main focus being on oncoming traffic and parked cars. But let's not forget about vehicles in our own lane in front of us. We always wanna keep a safe three to four seconds space cushion with the vehicle in front of us. You can determine how far three to four seconds is by choosing any fixed object on the road that the car in front of you passes and then counting the time it takes for you to reach that same fixed object. Confused? Well, let's quickly demonstrate how we can determine a three second space cushion. Watch the vehicle in front of us. As soon as that vehicle passes that parked car to the right, let's start counting 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. It took us three seconds to pass the same parked car. 
That's a three second space cushion, and that's how far we wanna be behind another vehicle when driving conditions are ideal. If the roads are wet or you're driving a heavier truck or SUV that takes longer to break, then you wanna give yourself an extra second of cushion or four seconds total. At residential speeds, a three to four second space cushion is about two to three car lengths. And as you move to faster moving streets, you'll see that three to four seconds is much greater in distance than two to three car lengths. But that's a topic for another video. Now you know all about how to keep a safe lane position with cars all around your vehicle. Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please take a quick second to subscribe to our channel where you're gonna find more helpful videos just like this one. From Liz and everyone here at Drivers at Direct, again, thank you and stay safe out there.